Hello, my name is Andrew Van Slars, and this is a quick walkthrough of how to configure RiotJS to work with Webpack. If you're not familiar with RiotJS, you might want to check out my previous videos to get you started. In this video, we're going to cover getting Webpack and the dependencies we'll be using installed via NPM, setting up the Webpack configuration file to process our tag and JavaScript files, and serving a page with our bundled assets through Webpack's development server. Let's get our environment set up. I've created an empty directory for this project, and I have both Atom and my terminal window pointed to that directory, so let's get started. Because we're going to be using NPM modules, we're going to start with an NPM init, and we're going to pass it the Y flag, so it takes the defaults and we don't have to press enter for each one. And now I'm going to npm install webpack, passing it the save dev flag. And now that webpack's installed, I'm going to npm install again with the save dev flag, webpack dev server. In order for webpack to process our .tag files that we're going to use for Riot, we're going to install a tag loader. So we npm install, save dev, tag, loader. We're also going to install the Babel loader. Again, so Webpack can process our JavaScript files where we may choose to use ES6 or sorry, ES2015 syntax. And Babel loader has a couple of dependencies. So we'll npm install. Again, save dev, Babel core. And as of Babel 6, it uses this concept of presets. So we'll install the preset for ES2015. And of course, we want to set up Riot, so we're going to npm install save Riot. If we look at package.json, we'll see that Riot has been installed as a dependency, and Webpack, Webpack's dev server, our loaders, and our Babel dependencies have been installed as dev dependencies, so we're ready to get moving. The next thing we're going to want to do is create our Webpack configuration file. So in the terminal, I'll just type in touch webpack.config.js. We'll open that file up in Atom. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reference nodes path module. We're going to set module.exports to equal an object literal. And the first property we're going to give that object is entry. And that's going to tell Webpack what file to use as our entry point. So you see here, we're pointing to source index.js. And we'll create that file once we're done with the configuration. Our second property is output. And output is an object. And output has a path property, which we're going to set to the current directory name. And a file name property that we're going to set to bundle.js. And this is going to be the file name that Webpack outputs with all of our bundle JavaScript. Next, we'll create a module property. Module is also going to be an object. And that object is going to take a loader's array. And each loader is an object. We'll start with the Babel loader. So we'll create our object. And the first property we're going to give it is test. And test is going to take a regex that's going to point or basically tell us which files to process. 
So in this case, we're going to want anything that ends in .js. The second property is going to be the loader itself. So we say, hey, point to anything with a .js extension and use the Babel loader on that. But we want to make sure that we're not trying to process everything in the node modules directory. So we're going to pass node modules to the exclude property. And Babel also has that concept of presets that we saw while we were installing our dependencies. So we're going to pass it a query object. And that query object is going to take a preset, array, and we're going to pass it our ES2015 preset. And now we need to configure the tag loader. So it's going to follow the same pattern. So we'll have a test that tells it what files to process. In this case, we'll use anything that ends with .tag. The loader to use on those files. And that's going to be our tag loader. And we want to make sure we're not processing the node modules directory. So we'll exclude that. We can save that. And that pretty much handles our configuration for this setup. So now we're going to go into package.json and we're going to set up our scripts so that we can run the Webpack dev server. So we'll take that placeholder test script that they put in there. We'll rename that dev. And we're going to replace the content of that with a call to webpack dev server. We can save that. So I'm going to create that source directory that we pointed to in our webpack configuration. And I'm going to create an index.js file in there. And that's going to be our entry point. And in the root directory, I'm also going to create an index.html file. And I'm going to throw a basic shell of some HTML in there. I'll give that a title. And in the body, I'm going to add a script tag that points to bundle.js. And you'll remember that's the output that we told Webpack to create from our source files. I'm going to create a tags directory inside the source folder. And this is where we're going to put our Riot tags. So I'll create a new file there. And just for demonstration purposes, we'll create a sample output tag. We'll follow the basic pattern for creating a Riot tag. So we'll call sample output as our root element. We'll throw an H1 in there. And we'll say hello again from Riot.js. And I'm going to go back to index.html and add a reference to that. And now we need to set up our dependencies so we can mount that tag to the page. So in index.js, I'm going to create a variable riot and I'm going to point it to the riot node module. And I'm also going to require my tag file. And you'll note that I don't assign that to a variable because I don't need to reference it through a variable. I just need to make sure that the script is included on the page when everything gets bundled together. And now I'm going to add a document.addEventListener for the DOM content loaded event just to make sure my page has been fully loaded. And in the callback for that, I'm going to call riot.mount and pass it sample output. And I can save that. And back in the terminal, I can use that npm script that I added earlier by typing in npm run dev. And if all went well, we should see that it'll run through Webpack. It'll load up the Webpack dev server. And it'll create a bundle. And you'll see that it's processed our index.js our riot.js, and our sample output.tag, and that we can see this through localhost 8080. And you'll see it's serving our page, it has bundled our assets, and it's showing us our output from our tag. Now the nice thing about Webpack's dev server is that it automatically watches for changes in our files. 
So if I go into the sample output tag and I make some changes, I'll add a paragraph of lorem ipsum here and save that. And you'll see the terminal has updated. And I can also go back into my JavaScript. And because I'm using the Babel loader, I can use ES6 or ES2015's fat error syntax here. And I can save and we'll see that it updates the bundle. And if I go back to the browser and refresh, everything has been updated so we know it's working. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful and please check back for future videos.